All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division where we have more information that's come out about the Errol Spence Terrence Crawford rematch, secondhand type of information directly resulting from the win of Canelo Alvarez over Jermel Charlo and the rumored pay per view sales uh, for that fight. And if those numbers are accurate, which is no reason to believe that they're not, it affects the leverage that Terrence Crawford has in his fights with the PBC and consequently puts Errol Spence in a more powerful position than he was before. Uh, let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division, and we're going to be talking about contracts and negotiations and all that good old stuff in this video because we were waiting, or at least I was waiting, for the numbers to be released, or to the extent that we get the very good numbers uh, for the uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo pay-per-view fight that took place last weekend where Canelo Alvarez mopped up on Jermel Charlo and they were roughly 650,000 pay-per-views are the numbers that are being put out there and that does not bode well uh, for Canelo Alvarez and Terrence Crawford's leverage uh, well actually it bodes well for Canelo Alvarez however it doesn't really bode well for Terrence Crawford and the leverage that he would have in fights with other people. And I will explain that to you. But before I get into it, let me welcome you back for, to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much. Matty, yo, man, you the guy, man. Thank you. Um, but let's get into this because, you know, I like to make some people mad, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, and this is this is how I see it. And I think this is a very solid point to make about uh, Terrence Crawford and the Errol Spence Jr. negotiation moving forward. Uh, and it is that it basically in, uh, is is this that um these pay-per-view sales for Terrence Crawford, for Canelo Alvarez, versus um versus Jermel uh, excuse me um yeah Jermel Charlo coming in around 650,000 pay-per-views could very well have a, an effect on uh Terrence Crawford's leverage in fights uh moving forward especially with Canelo Alvarez but in every other setting where they're dealing with the PBC who's negotiating with both fights and here it is uh Canelo Alvarez, if he did 650 with with um, with Jermel Charlo and Jermel Charlo is not somebody that really has a big history of doing a lot of pay-per-views or, or doing well on pay-per-views. But it actually hit him. What what's that? One hundred and fifty thousand less than they receive when. uh Canelo Alvarez fought Caleb Plant for the undisputed title, where uh, the undisputed title at 168 pounds. It basically tells you that what Canelo Alvarez does pretty much by himself is what I would say. There's some other times when he's done around 500,000 over there on the zone, but 650,000 over there on uh, for the fight with. Um, Canelo with uh, Jermel Charlo. It's not, I mean, it's just normal numbers for him. So, the, but it did at the same time do the same numbers as the fight between Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence, uh, and Terrence Crawford, which, by the way, was lower or right around what they thought it would do uh, before the fight took place. So you have, and let me tell you what I mean by that. 
Steven Espinosa, the president of Showtime Sports, said that had said what they thought that that fight would do and that when the, the numbers came in for Errol and Terrence, he was like, yeah, that's around what we had expected it. Now, when they say that that's what they expected, you have to go back and listen to what they said when they were when they were talking about the, the purse splits and the guarantees and all of that before the fight got made. And they were essentially saying that Terrence Crawford's not a draw. So you have and it's not a big draw, right? It's not a big draw where they're going to pay a ton of money for that particular for that particular fight. Right. So now you have can that taking place. You have Canelo Alvarez and underperformed compared to Caleb Plant at the very least. So you can look at Terrence Crawford now and say, OK, what do they do with them? What type of big chances are they going to take on him? When number one, Jermel Charlo, who was I mean, probably a little less stature than Terrence Crawford was when Canelo gets in with him, it underperforms. And when they pay a ton of money or a ton of upfront money or guaranteed money to Terrence Crawford and the fight does exactly what they said that it would do, it tells you that that Canelo Alvarez when he's negotiating with other people for fights on that network are not going to feel like, oh, OK, let me pay him a lot of mo- a lot of money or let's do this fight and go out of our way to do this fight, because there's nothing in the uh, there's nothing in the pr- prior performances that are going to tell you that he's really going to excel. Right. And that and there's some reason really to like bend over backwards to make a fight with him. Right. So Canelo most definitely is not going to bend over backwards to make a fight with him. Tim Zhu, like take for, and then after that, he also named a bunch of people that he's not going to fight. Not going to fight Jerron Ennis, not going to fight da- Danny Garcia, not going to fight Keith Thurman. All of these things just speak to the fact that if Errol Spence Jr. pays his cards right and is willing to take the time necessary to do so, he's probably going to get what he wants or is in a very good position to get what he wants in, for the rematch with, with Terrence Crawford, which is a fight at 154, at a fight at 154 pounds. Uh, again, because you always have to look at what's the other person's best alternative to that particular fight. And it doesn't look like Terrence Crawford has a lot of alternatives. And please look up the term, the term BATNA is best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And it is the standard where, where people are usually talking about like A sides and B sides. That stuff goes to like who the big attraction is for fans to buy the fight. And, and that definitely goes into the consideration of, you know, who has more leverage. <laughs> but the essence of the leverage is really stated in whoever has the best alternative. Right. And Errol Spence Jr. is somebody that is a known commodity and he has a lot of other options. He has a lot of other people he can fight if he continues to fight, want to want to fight if and Arrow also is not somebody that seems like he is just like really overcome and overwhelmed with making a, you know, unreason, not unreasonable, but a whole lot of money and all of that. He's probably more in a rebuilding mode right now if he doesn't fight Terrence Crawford. So Terrence Crawford is the one that's saying he's looking for legacy fights and all of that. And he's looking for the big paydays. Well, what big payday? There's no payday near what he's going to get for Errol Spence Jr. The only one that he had before, the two that he had before both went away with him saying he's not going to fight Jermel. And with Jermel's loss, that definitely probably did take a lot of value away from that fight. And Canelo Alvarez doesn't want to fight him. And the numbers wouldn't bode well for Canelo, give Canelo a reason to do so regardless, right? But anyway, that's just my take on the matter. Uh, I think that that is an interesting conversation and 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 solid observations about the ramifications of of or the reflection of the market value of these fighters based on the, their performances and pay-per-views. But anyway, you let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.